Fastest recap of SHOT Show 2024, let's go ahead and get into it. First company, Lago Arms, they introduced the Alien Creator. Basically, it's easier to cock the gun and the red dot is on the slide now. Oracle Arms released the 2311 Compact Pro. It's basically a 2011 that takes P320 mags, but now they have a compact version and it has ports on it, pretty cool. Primary Arms, they had a bunch of optics to even go in depth on. My favorite one was the PLX Compact. It's gonna come in at around 1400, but it looks cool and the glass on it was so crisp. Ohio Ordnance Works, they released a new belt-fed machine gun. It actually looks like a sniper rifle crossed with a belt-fed machine gun. Overall, it looked pretty cool, and they had a radical defense suppressor on it that was built for it. Super cool, but I mean, from a civilian standpoint, we're never going to see that. Mantis Arms, I'm not going to lie, I was pretty impressed with their products. Their Blackbeard X that goes right into an AR where you swap the bolt carrier group, I was super impressed with that. It resets the trigger, and then they also have ones for the pistol where you can shoot, reset your gun, but I really liked the AR one. Save Your Equipment launched a new line of single rifle bags that look super clean and are super affordable. JK Armament launched a new suppressor called the GOAT HF, stands for high flow. Same concept like all the JK cans where you can swap the baffles on it or add them to it, but now it has flow through or vent through technology to help eliminate gas going back in the system. Amend 2 mags, I really enjoyed talking with this group of guys. They have awesome mags and if you haven't heard, they have a monthly sign up where they'll send a new mag that's custom painted or has some cool design on it. Definitely worth checking out. Bursa launched a new 1911 that's very affordable as well. Next up, Watchtower Firearms had a great conversation with these guys. I actually met the CEO there. They have a line of AR-15 and AR-10s that they launched, basically duty-rated guns that are bomb-proof. And then, of course, they have the PewView Edition Apache, and now they launched the normal Apache, which, honestly, I like the grip on the new Apache better. It has, like, more texture to it, and overall, it just looks awesome. Primary Weapon Systems, or PWS, they launched a new UXR. Super cool concept. Their motto is one gun to rule them all, because what you can do is buy the entire gun chambered in like 556 and then you can add on or buy different kits to swap to 308 762 300 blackout and i'm sure they'll have some other calibers coming soon but this gun's basically like legos for an ar where you can swap the magwell out put the ak1 or ar swap the barrel for a different caliber super cool concept also lone wolf arms they have the dusk 19 which is basically a glock 19 with a better grip angle and just overall feels a lot better than a glock 19 in my opinion but they're also getting into sig so stay Stay tuned for some more SIG parts coming from Lone Wolf. Desert Tech launched a couple new guns this year. They have the Wolverine as well as the Sabretooth. Sabretooth is full auto and Wolverine is semi-auto for us civilians. This is the replacement to their old bullpup they have. I believe it's like the MDX or something like that. Basically has all the upgrades or feedback they took from the last model and they put it on this model. And I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty freaking cool for a bullpup. Flux Defense, they stirred the market with a P365 chassis. They're known for the Flux Raider for the P320 where you can drop in the fire control unit unit does a little kick out and it's a compact little sub gun same thing but now with the p365 dead air silencers they brought four new suppressors to shot show one is a 338 caliber lightweight titanium suppressor and then they launched two nomads the nomad xc ti and then the nomad xc shorter version of it both of them are lightweight and definitely meant on like hunting type rifles i'd say but then their fourth one and i was blown away with this one is the lazarus six it's basically a bomb proof suppressor that is meant for six millimeter or below but this thing was super cool because the different configurations it has it has just like the base suppressor which felt about the same weight as like a Sandman S but on the inside the baffles are triscaline which is their new additive manufactured baffles and does have vent through technology through that but then at the tip of it basically it looks like an e-brake if you've seen those before but now this will adjust how much vent or how much flow will go through the can so rather than having to adjust like your adjustable gas block or changing buffer weight you're going to be able to tune just the suppressor for the gun you have with this device on the end super exciting excited about this and I think it looks awesome. Blade Tech, I'd say is a direct competitor to Safari Land, but they have their micro as well as full size holster mounts. I was super impressed with these guys as far as having a mount for your magazines and being able to cant them right away. Awesome products from them, definitely worth checking out. Shadow Systems had two new guns this year and one suppressor, the MR920P and the XR920P. The cool thing about these is both of them have a comp on the end of the threaded barrel, but it's a toolless comp where you can take the gun apart, flip a little switch and it screws right off, or you can put it back on, flip the switch back, 
and it stays on and it's solid. As well as, like I said, they have a new nine mil suppressor to go on their shadow system pistols. Infinity Targets was there. Awesome group of guys to connect with. If you haven't seen their ads online or seen their targets, definitely check it out. Core Essentials was also there. Awesome connecting with these guys. They're known for their EDC belts, which I have, but they're also getting into more EDC materials like backpacks, knives. So stay tuned for that from Core Essentials. Panzer Arms was there and man, I loved connecting with these guys. Big things that they have, they're known for their M4 clone, but now they launched a new version with wood furniture on it that looks super cool. They also released a lever action shotgun that looks super dope as well. And then on top of that, they have their AR, AK, and a new SCAR model that are all magazine fed 12 gauge shotguns that all look super dope too. Fold AR was there. So they're known for their folding AR at the barrel for like a 16 inch, but now they released a shorter version that is even more compact that can go right in a bag. Tecto knives were there. Great group of guys as well. They have some awesome knives, whether it be assisted opening or auto, definitely worth checking them out. Unity Tactical was there. Mainly they're known for their risers and magnifiers, but they launched a new switch to go on the rear flashlights. And I'm pretty excited to see what that can be used for. HRT Tactical was there. If you see my channel, obviously I have a lot of their gear. Love these guys as well. And they had a bunch of new products. They had a new dump bag that you can put on your duty belt, a new med pack that you can put on your duty belt. They have their flashlights, the AWLS. They now have handheld versions of that. They have a lightweight windbreaker that you can keep in your pack and several other products that we're gonna have to get to later. Huxworks did an awesome job and they launched four new suppressors. Well, actually kind of three and a half. First one is a 22 suppressor that is the same flow through 3D printed can. In tandem with that, they launched a cleaning kit because you can't take the flow through 3D printed cans apart. So you basically put it in this new container and put the solvents in and it cleans your can for you. They also released the Ventum 556. They also released the Flow 6K. And then lastly, they released the Ventum 12 gauge suppressor. Sad thing about this one, it's only for military or law enforcement and it's only meant to go on the Genesis 12 gauge shotgun. So unless they change those rules and unless you have a Genesis shotgun, it won't be that applicable for you. Palmetto State Armory. Oh my gosh, what didn't these guys have this year? Who? We might need a separate video for this one, but rattling them off real quick. The STG 44, the crink lineup coming in 556, then 300 blackout, 545 as well as 762. A Jackal and 308, a Jackal bullpup that's still in concept phase. The new Saber pistols, basically the dagger pistols they have, but they're all Gucci'd up at a very affordable price point. A micro dagger Saber edition, basically a 43X, all Gucci'd up just like the other Sabres. They had a 570 shotgun that was in concept phase. They had a bolt action that was in concept phase. The Thumper grenade launcher in 44 millimeter, which blew my mind. I think we all need one of those, especially you can do it on a under barrel on an AR, which looked so cool. And then of course the X57 or the MP7 clone. Sadly, they let me handle it and I kind of broke it, but it's a concept or it's in prototype phase. So totally fine. But man, there was a bunch of other stuff, but those are the main highlights from PSA. Aero Precision launched a new lower receiver that is ambidextrous, as well as they're making lever action guns now. Pretty cool. Chris USA or Chris Vector, they launched the Gen 3 Vector and this thing is sick. They have a new stock design that looks super dope. You can swap the grip on it for any AR-15 aftermarket grip, which makes it super modular and just looks overall way cooler. Foxtrot Mics, they brought their ranch rifle, which hopefully we're gonna have on the channel soon to feature. But the big thing they made was a barrel, muzzle device, gas block, all built out of one piece. Reason being is all this is put together, it's solid, nothing can break when it's one piece. Super innovative, can't wait to see what they're gonna do with that. A3 Tactical, they have a bullpup chassis that you can drop an AR-15 lower into, have the same trigger pull, so it's not the mushy bullpup trigger. And then you can put a Foxtrot Mics, a BRN-180, or a Jackal Upper on top, and you have a full bullpup. Super cool stuff from them. Staccato launched a new pistol called the Staccato C. Use case for this, think of it basically as a Glock 19, but a 2011. What I mean by that is it's small enough to carry, but yet it's also long enough or big enough to use as a duty pistol as well. Hollow Sun had a bunch of new products. Big ones is a new IR Illuminator. They have their thermal and night vision optics for a rifle that are being released now, as well as they had the same concept, but smaller that you could put on like a pistol or like a Flux Raider. They also had some new flashlights, both a compact one for pistols and a full size one for pistols. So a lot of cool stuff from them. Silencer Shop launched a new kiosk that looks super clean. So you're probably gonna be seeing that in your gun stores and dealers near you soon. Alpha Foxtrot, if you haven't heard of these guys, you're gonna be hearing a lot more from them. They have a pistol they launched recently called the SA-15, basically a 2011 or 1911 nine millimeter gun that is smaller for almost concealed carry use. This thing felt super good, super excited about it. 
and there's a lot more cool stuff coming from them in the future. Live Free Armory, they have the Apollo 11, which is an affordable 2011 platform, but they also launched a new pistol called the Falcon 9X, as well as the Falcon 9XC. These are basically Glock 19s, but the XC has a comp on the end and some better grip, and both of these are super affordable, like, I mean, starting at 350. Smith & Wesson launched a new lever action gun that looks super dope, as well as they have their performance center pistols that look super clean as well. Glock, well, they launched the Glock 495, I'm just kidding. They launched the Glock 49, which is just a 17 slide on a 19 frame. Canik launched a new pistol partnered with Terran Tactical. Kind of like the Canik Rival pistol, but it has all the Terran Tactical stuff on it. Comp, extended magwell, gold finish. Looks super dope and it's going to be super affordable. So if you want a Terran Tactical gun, this is the one to get. It's going to be 950. <coughs> Excuse me. CH Precision killed it this year with a bunch of new optics. They launched the EDR1, looks kind of like a Sig Romeo 5. EDR2, which looks more like an EOTech or a SIG Romeo 8T, basically a Super Duty optic. And then they also released an LPVO that didn't quite look like an LPVO. It had all the turrets on the side. It looks more like a precision scope, but they're calling it an LPVO. Looks super sick. And then also in the future, they have an enclosed EDC optic that'll be coming out as well. Magpul launched a clear mag called the T-Mag. Same reliability, now it's just see-through. Springfield Armory launched the TRP, tactical response pistol. It's a 1911 chambered in 45. And I'm gonna be honest, I wanted to hate this pistol, but after I grabbed it, and felt it. Man, dude, it's pretty cool. Comes in at a good MSRP. The grip on it feels solid. You can get it in a bunch of different colors. Definitely worth checking out. Midwest Industries launched two new products. One is a quad rail on the front of an AK, basically Zeneco furniture quad rail, but now you can actually get this and it's from Midwest Industries. Looks super cool. The other one is they have some new stocks for lever action guns, both straight grip and curved grip that look tactical as well. The big one from Silencer Co, I'd say, is the new Spectre 9, which is a super small nine millimeter can. PTR Industries had a new suppressor as well. It had flow through or vent through technology, super quiet. There's a bunch of documents online from Pew Science if you wanna read that, as well as they launched a 5.56 AR that looks like an HK or a PTR type gun. Right on Optics had a new spotter scope, a new pistol red dot, as well as some other new optics that look super cool. Daniel Defense had two big launches, the H9 pistol, as well as the Daniel Defense PCC and nine millimeter. Pistol does come in at a higher MSRP, but man, dude, holding this thing in your hands, it felt solid. Excited to see what comes of that. And the PCC, it takes Scorpion mags, way better than Glock mags, and is definitely comparable to like a SIG nine millimeter or like an AR9 that you'd have, but now you get the Daniel Defense quality for it. Radical Firearms. If you haven't heard of these guys, look them up. They are just taking over the market. All the Ohio Ordnance machine guns and a lot of the other machine guns around the entire show had a Radical Defense suppressor on it. So they have their new line of suppressors that you should definitely go check out, as well as they have their new line of AR-15s that are meant more for like SWAT and police that are just duty grade ARs that can take a beating and keep running. I'm excited to see what else is to come from them. Franklin Armory has their Glock 17 and now the Glock 22 binary switch. Basically you buy the whole slide, it has the little switch on it to go single fire or binary mode now. Radian Weapon Systems, they launched a new kit for the P365 macro that you can swap the magwell or add the magwell to it a new back strap that's more grippy, and a couple other parts to Gucci it out. Valhalla Tactical has a dope new jacket called the Loki jacket. Basically, you can conceal your gun and whip it out really quick. Sons of Liberty Gunworks has a new caliber called the 6 Max. Reminds me of like 300 Blackout mixed with like a 5.56 round. But overall, this is meant for shorter barrels with higher velocity still. First Spear as well as First Form was there. The two companies partnered together are launching a new plate carrier that's meant for more like workout or walking with weights on. Definitely gonna be picking up one of those. And then and lastly, Arkin Optics was there with some new offerings as far as rifle scopes and LPVOs that are definitely worth checking out as well. Unfortunately, there were some boosts I didn't get to hit while there, but from the ones I saw, these are the main things worth noting. There you go. I hope this was helpful. If it was, like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.